Hey guys, today what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, perform the push installation. We're gonna see how to perform the push installation on the uh, uh, file server uh, using the command center. Okay, so in short, how to add any server or any client into the backup from the command center. Okay, assuming that we have you have already downloaded the latest software, your software cache is up to date. So how to check the uh, software ca uh, cache or how you can actually download the software. So you can go to manage and in the manage under the system, you can go to the maintenance and in the maintenance, you can download or copy the software latest software over here. Okay, so once you have downloaded the latest uh, software, now what you can do is you can simply go to the protect. And in the protect right now, you can see the virtualization file server database laptop and in the application, you can see office 365 and exchange. Now, what I want to do is I want to back up. I want to add a file server into the backup. So I will say file server. Now, once you click on file server, you can see what all servers are currently getting backed up. All the servers will be visible to you. Now I want to add, I want to perform a push installation on one of the server. Okay. The file system server that I have. So how you can do it, you can simply say add server. Okay. Now, once you click on add server, you can select it's a file server for which we want to, uh, just one minute. So we'll just click on add server. Now, once you click on add server, you can see the multiple options coming up over here. You have the NAS device, Nutanix files and all that. But in order to add a windows file or Linux file, or uh, Linux server, you can select the file server. Now, after that, it is going to ask you the method, select this method to install software package around your computer or select this method to add the packages to the existing server. So I, this is a new server on which I need to install the packages. You are going to select this option. If that particular server has already has some package and you want to add some package to that particular server. So in that case, you're going to select the second option. Okay. Now. What we're going to do is in the host name, you can put the server FQDN or IP. So let me put the server IP address over there. Now put the username in the username. You can put the username that will be used to log into that particular server, which has the required permission. Okay. So once you have given that password, then what is the uh, uh, server for uh, like what, what type of OS on which you are installing the uh, package? So it's a Windows server on which I'm performing the installation. I don't want to change the installation uh, directory. Either you can define it, and if you don't define it, by default it's going to do it in the C program files. Okay. Now once you have done that, uh, you can select if you want to give the permission to Commvault to reboot that one, but I don't want to give that particular one. Now in the macro configuration, you can even select the plans, what plan you want to apply on that particular server later on to back up that one. What are the plans and everything? I have already explained in the another video how to apply any plan on the sub clients uh, from the command center. All those things I have already explained in the another video. Right now, my intention is to perform the push installation on this particular server that I have. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply click on install. And once you click on install, you will be seeing one job will be submitted and you can monitor that installation progress over here, it will show you one job getting created. Over here, it will show you the job ID as well. Uh, there will be a prompt coming up over here and you can simply click on view job details or you can go to the jobs. You can see over there, uh, job details and you can go to the jobs. And once you go to the jobs in that particular one, you can see the server is getting, the installation is getting in progress. So once it get complete, you will see that particular server getting added to your uh, server list. So if I go to the protect and if I go to the file server right now, you can see the configured tab is cross like there's a cross on the configured one. It says uh, it's been not been configured correctly as of now. And even the green sign is not coming up. That means it's not uh, like no software has been installed on this server as of now. And you can see the status it's installing. So once it get installed, all these things will get changed and we, you will be able to take the backup of these particular devices. Now with that one, the question will be coming up. The one thing that you have to keep in mind, the ports number that you require to perform the push installation on the Linux server, the port number that you required is the port number that you required for the Linux is a port number 22 that should be open. And for your windows, the port number that we required is 
135, 139, and 445. So these are the three ports that we required for the windows. So let me put down uh, uh, all, all of them uh, together over here. So for the Linux, what you require is for the Linux, I would say for the Linux, you required the port number 22. For the Windows, we require the port number 135, 139, and 445, along with the Commvault basic ports. Okay. So the Commvault basic ports include 8400 and 8401. So these are the port numbers that we required in order to perform the push installation on any of the servers. Okay. So let's get back and check the status for your installation. So guys, uh, you can see the installation job got successfully completed. And just to verify, if I go to the file server, now you can see the status is configured and you can see it's a green sign coming up. It's online. Okay. And it has never been backed up. So this is how you are going to perform the installation on any file server. Now, if like you want to take a backup, I have already explained in another video, you can just select the client. You can apply the plans on the sub clients. Uh, like this is a client properties that you have. And this is a sub client that you have. You can assign a plan to it. You can assign the content on that a particular sub client, what all data that you want to back up. So you will be able to take the backup of this particular client. So this is how you perform the push installation on this, uh, what you can say on the file server using the command center. It's a very simple, very straightforward. The process has been easy down. Uh, not too many options that has been, uh, you know, the options that has been asked to you very simple. So yes, uh, this is how you can configure a backup for any file server to the command center. Thank you so much guys.